Hello to everybody guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Ivan Hammered, nutritional biologist and kinesiologist and specialize in functional nutrition and anti-aging medicine. Today we're going to talk about a peptide made of three amino acids, GHK, so glycine, histidine and lysine, Q, because this peptide is able to bind copper. So a peptide copper complex, quite like albumin or alpha fetoprotein, with the difference that this peptide have only three amino acids. So really be available when we take it with cream or with injection or with oral pills. Let's figure it out. GHKQ peptides was discovered in 1973, so 50 years ago. Uh, the first studies was made to understand which was the mechanism that lead to the production of fibrinogen. And during that study, they discovered that GHKQ can be useful to inhibit fibrinogen. When we talk about fibrinogen, we talk about coagulation mechanisms, so mechanisms that increase the risk of blood clots, that increase the platelet aggregation, so mechanisms that are bad for our cardiovascular health. Actually, even if the first study with protagonist GHKQ was in 1973, we start to have concrete results of the effect of GHKQ in 1997, 1999. So from now on, from the 1999 on, you can find all the trials that they made with animals, so mice, dogs, and also with humans. Actually, you will never find the big clinical trials with GHKQ because nobody wants to pay for it. You know, it's not something that you say, ah, okay, wow, amazing, I can uh, pay dozens of millions to create a experimental trial. Nobody will. Actually, because GHKQ is something that you can find inside your body, like BPC-157, like TB-500, so it's not something brand new, so there is not too much speculation on it. But let's say what GHKQ can do and why. So GHKQ is a natural peptide. We can find it inside us. So when there is a damage, when we get injured uh, for radiation or for every kind of thing that damage us, we produce fibrinogen and we have this degradation of collagen. Inside collagen, inside fibrinogen, you can find GHKQ. So it's something that naturally occurs when we get damage to induce repair. And most of these actions are thanks to copper. The copper binding affinity of GHKQ is the reason why he is so strong and so powerful in the regenerating tissues. Bind copper is very useful for increasing antioxidant enzymes. So when you have copper, you can increase superoxide dismutase one activity. And if you don't know what it is, superoxide dismutase is an enzyme that decreases anion superoxide, so the reduced form of oxygen that can generate oxidative stress, lipid peroxidation, and all this bad stuff that can decrease the cellular vitality. So GHKQ can not only increase superoxidismutase, but can also increase glutathione, so decrease radical oxygen species, and can of course decrease also the production of inflammatory cytokines by immune cells. Briefly speaking, the point are four, so what GHKQ can do to our cells. First, decrease inflammation. We need low inflammation if we want to maintain the tissue homeostasis. The more inflammation, the more fibrinogen production, the more the stimulation of fibroblasts, the more the collagen, the less functional tissue we have after the end of the remodeling process, after the end of the regenerative process, and we don't want it. So we want to blunt inflammation, little bit, we want to inflammation be dampened for that. A GHKQ is very useful for this. Secondly, chemo attraction. It's true that we don't want inflammation, we don't want too much cytokines, but we want our fibroblast, we want our immune cells in the right moment. So at the beginning of the injury, GHKQ can recall and gather the immune cells, the fibrinogen, to put the right collagen, but also to put the proteoglycan, the glycosaminoglycan, the dermatan sulfate, and all the stuff that we need to regenerate the right amount of connective tissue in the right proportion. So some cells, of course, and some 
keratin sulfate and some proteoglycans, etc. etc. Third, protein synthesis. Every time that we have to activate our cells, every time that we need to boost function of our cells, we need more protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is that process with which protein are made. So from DNA to mRNA to protein. GHKQ can increase synthesis of protein like collagen, but also can increase synthesis of glutathion, for example, or superoxidodismutase. So this kind of antioxidant that are crucial for cellular function. So thanks to this, GHKQ can regenerate cells and can increase the functionality of tissues also after a bad damage. And four, maybe the most important thing if we talk about anti-aging, proliferation and differentiation of stem cells. So at the beginning of the damage, we want proliferation. After three days, for example, if we get injured and I sprain my arm, the first three days I want more stem cells, so I want proliferation. In this case, you don't want GHKQ, so with copper, you want GHK with no copper, because copper stimulates differentiation of stem cells. We don't want it, so we want proliferation. We want increased cell cycle inside the cells, but we want the proliferation, okay? After three days, we can use high amount of copper because then we want differentiation. So we want that the stem cells differentiate to the final cellular lining. So for example, if I have a problem in my muscle, I want myocytes. If I have a problem in my cartilage, I want chondrocytes. If I have a problem in my heart, I want, I want cardiomyocytes in the liver, hepatocytes, etc., etc. So that's the reason why GHKQ is very useful because it can dampen inflammation, gather immune cells, increase protein synthesis, and can also, of course, boost both proliferation and differentiation of stem cells. So we say the GHKQ can repair quite everything. The, its job is to repair tissues. So how we can take it, which is the best form, pills, injection, or nasal spray, depends. For example, if we have neurodegenerative diseases, for example, Parkinson disease, Alzheimer's disease, or also depression, so alteration in neurotransmitters, production, metabolization, or release, we probably can use GHK as a nasal spray. So every delivery system is different because trigger easily different part of the body. For example, if I had a strain or if I had an injury in my muscle or tendons or ligaments, probably injection is the best. Pay attention when you do injection in a place where there is low blood supply because it is very painful. So if you have to put GHKQ local, take care that is muscle and not tendon. So if your muscles, okay. If in tendons, no. Maybe you can use the cream or gel or stuff like this. If you want to heal your stomach or intestine lining, oral, of course, is the best. Oral GHKQ is quite similar to oral BPC-157. The reason why GHKQ can heal also ulcers is that it can act very similarly to antihistaminic drugs because the form, the molecular form is very similar. So it blocks the effect of histamine in the ulcers, block the production of acid and have also the anti-inflammatory effect of GHKQ, increasing superoxidodismutase, decreasing inflammation and both of these effects can speed up the recovery. Otherwise, if you have to use GHKQ for something that's about your brain, for example, could be brain fog, could be fatigue, could be depression also, when there is an alteration in neurotransmitter metabolism or release or production actually, can help because when you decrease inflammation, you can fix a lot of problems. You can use it also if neuro neurodegenerative diseases, especially Parkinson or SLA or lateral amyotrophic sclerosis in Alzheimer's disease, because in every neurodegenerative pathology there is an alteration of our antioxidant system. So if you can boost it, boost it. So you can do it. You have to do it. In this case, I, my advice is to use GHKQ, nasal spray, uh, with BPC, with TB500. Of course, uh, if the product is real, uh, the bioviability in this case is very good, is very high, even if uh, the nasal epithelium is very thin in this case, but it's okay. Go directly in the brain. 
so easily. Probably injection is good too, so my advice is to use both at the beginning if you want to use it for modulating neuroinflammation or stimulation of hippocampal stem cells. Could be very useful. It's up to you. Anyway, otherwise to use both, I'd rather use different peptides that can trigger different pathways. Okay, for example, BPC-157 that can trigger hepatocytic growth factor, uh, nitric oxide uh, action directly. GHKQ can have a nitric oxide stimulating effect, but this is because of the decreasing of superoxide. So more oxygen available, and uh, if there is more oxygen available, there is more nitric oxide, because the more superoxide, the less nitric oxide and vice versa. That's the reason why. And then you can use TB500 to increase the connection with all the neurons, thanks to the increase in this case of alpha-actinin, thanks to its capacity to stabilize microfilament in the cytoskeletron of the, of the neurons. Actually, we are talking about neurodegenerative diseases, so you must take magnesium trionate to decrease an MDA and glutamine toxicity. You must take other antioxidants in this case, so curcumin is very useful to decrease oxidative stress and increase also marker of cellular vitality. Tyrosine to increase and have more dopamine. Actually, an adaptogen could be very good in this case to lower the cortisol and increase the hippocampal vitality, but also increase all your nerve cell vitality. And acetylcysteine, both for glutathione, but also for decrease glutamate toxicity too. And omega-3 fatty acids, complex B for neurotransmitters metabolism, and all this stuff. You need to take all this stuff, okay? CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid, Peptides can dramatically help because they are very, they have a high bioavailability. They are very effective because one of them function is to decrease inflammation and stimulate protein synthesis and body repair. Okay, so hope you like it, this video. You can find more in my book as ever. Thank you so much for being here and see you next time.